Hi, this is Carl Palachuk, and this is another SOP video for managed service providers. Today we're going to talk about after hours work. If you followed me at all, you know I have one extremely important rule about after hours work. You don't have to do it. There is no good excuse to work after hours on a regular basis in the IT business. Every single conference I go to, somebody makes the casual statement, well, of course you have to work after hours. And I'm here to tell you, of course you do not. Most businesses in the world have hours where they don't work. So you should probably have something very common and reasonable for your area, like nine to five, eight to five, eight to six, something like that but not 24 seven. So there's a few things that make up this rule and make it very manageable. There's an internal and an external component to your after hours work policy. You don't wanna pay your employees overtime and even if you don't pay them overtime because they're on salary, you still don't want them to be overworked. You want them to have a balanced life. At the same time, you want your clients to respect your after hours policy so that you get to have a personal life. There are no large companies in which people call the owner at 10 o'clock at night or call anybody on the service board, call their, their cell phones at 11 o'clock on a Sunday. It literally does not happen. If this is happening to you, it's because you haven't stressed the policy internally or externally in other words, you have trained your clients to interrupt your work and to be available all the time. And so they think you're available all the time. So you need to state this policy. It should be written down inside your company. Employees should know that they are not authorized to work after five o'clock or six o'clock, whatever it is, without prior authorization. And that way they just won't. After clients are used to this policy, they'll stop calling. Very frequently, we are victims of modern technology. What happens is clients can put in email anytime. They can put in tickets anytime. They can text you anytime. And it really has more to do with when they thought about it than it does about needing something urgently. Don't assume that something is urgent just because somebody put in a ticket. A client remembered, oh, that stupid printer at work, I've got to update the drivers on that. So they put in a ticket and they put it in at 10 o'clock at night. That does not mean that they need you to go run to the office or remote in and put in drivers. It just means that they are putting it into your system and you should treat it that way. The same thing is true with phone calls. If you've trained them to call you at all hours, just stop answering the phone. Trust me, the world will keep spinning. Personally, I think that you should charge two times your regular rate to work after hours. That's what we do. Some people are more comfortable with a, you know, one and a half times, a 50% increase. That's fine too. It should be enough to actually discourage employees. Remember, if clients think, oh, it only costs me an extra, whatever, $5 an hour. Well, sure, it's worth five bucks for me to get this done after hours. They'll take advantage of it. But if the difference goes from $165 an hour to $330 an hour, pretty soon you're talking real money, right? So they will use fewer hours if you make sure that they understand that that's what their policy is. One easy way to enforce this is to make sure that your, all of your employees know that if they're working on something and it gets to be say 430, that they tell the client, just so you know, I'm gonna work on this until five and then we'll come back in the morning if you want me to work after five o'clock, I need to get permission from my supervisor and you need to approve the after hours labor rate, which is twice our normal rate. So even if something's covered by managed services, it is not covered after five o'clock. So maintenance covers the operating system and software during normal business hours. If they want after hours support, that's going to cost them extra. Again, a simple policy that kind of enforces itself. Now, if you do make after hours work available to your clients, you're gonna have to make sure that you've got employees willing to cover that. So that's something that you've got to put in place once you stop offering automatic after hours work. Finally, it's a good idea to have a policy 
in place to cover yourself so that when the client asks you to work after hours and you have to be on site, you should have somebody there. Someone from their company should be on site to make sure that you're not held liable for something that just happened to go wrong and you were there alone. It's just a wise thing to do. Once you decide that you're finished working after hours for no extra money, you just need to put a few policies in place and it will happen very smoothly. Trust me on this one. Everyone who's done it has benefited from it. For Small Biz Thoughts, this is Carl Palchuk wishing you the absolute best in your managed service business.